I ain't gonna stop getting high, I ain't gonna stop getting high, I ain't never even gonna try, even though I almost died, but I didn't, I'm alive, huh? What's your favorite one, and uh, why? Uh, I think the poem on my ribs, and just because I, it's, I love looking at it, it's the most interesting place that I have a tattoo so far. Okay, and then Jack also said, Megan, you're really hot. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Up top, Megan? Up top, Megan? Megan, right on top. I can't find that. Megan, right here. 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 Megan, Really get your autograph. Well, is red your color or what? You look amazing in red tonight. Yeah. Bruh, bruh. See what's up? Hey, can you look up right here, Yeah, Megan. Thank you. You look great. Yes. Hey, 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 you hooked on something, man. Megan, are you single or are you accepting offers for dates? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not single. Hi, Mary. She cute. Nice to meet you. Megan, right here, please, Megan. And that beautiful shoulder. Megan, over that shoulder. Over the shoulder, Megan. Over the shoulder. Nice shot. Over the shoulder, Megan. Megan, look over the shoulder. Because there was a test screening that a kid wrote, they said, what would you improve about this film? And the kid wrote, needs more boobs, and spelled um, boobs, B-E-W-B-S. <laughs> um, and that was the data that was collected and taken seriously yeah. by the people who were marketing the movie. No, I'm actually incredibly sensitive. And there was so much going on with me at that time that just the, that movie being picked apart wasn't at the top of my, that I, you know, I was getting bullied from all angles and, and it wasn't that that in particular was, was hurtful. It was, but it, there was so much happening between the release of this movie, something very unfortunate was going on for me publicity wise. Um, when this movie, when I was promoting this movie and then some other things happened after that and I was dealing with a, a tremendous amount of negativity and I wasn't on social media or anything like that but it was just constantly in the tabloids or on celebrity blogs like back when Perez Hilton was like the website. It was expected I guess I would say because I had such a fraught relationship just with the public and with the media and with journalists and 
I was struggling so much at that time in general that this didn't stand out as like a particularly painful moment. It just was a part of the mix. But it was, it's overwhelming because what was happening there, and you must have been taken aback by like how sexualized I was and how I was like reduced to, I mean, objectified is like, it's not the right word. It doesn't capture what was happening to me at the time. Yeah. But it wasn't just with that movie. It was with every producer I worked with. So that was at a, it, it preceded a breaking point for me where you said you had to go into therapy. I had, I think, a genuine psychological breakdown probably where I wanted just nothing to do. I didn't want to be seen. I didn't want to have to take a photo. I didn't want to have to do a magazine. I didn't want to have to walk a carpet. I didn't want to have to be seen in public at all because the, the fear and the, the belief, the, the absolute certainty that I believed that I was going to be mocked or spat at or someone would yell at me or people would stone me or savage me for just being out and being whatever. I didn't look perfect. I was too fat. I was too thin. I was stupid. I was offensive. I was a waste of space. I was a bad actress, whatever. Well, all of the, all of the things you can think of, I, I anticipated experiencing that because my belief system was from what I had experienced that the world wasn't going to accept me. And so I feel like, you know, I was sort of out in front of the Me Too movement before the Me Too movement happened. Like yeah. I was speaking out and saying, you know, hey, these things are happening to me and they're not okay. And everyone was like, oh, you, we don't care. You deserve it because of how oh, yeah. you talk, because of how you look, because of how you dress, because of the jokes you make. That's why you I felt like, you know, we live in this moment right now where you, you believe victims, but if there's ever going to be one person that it was okay not to believe, it would be me. If it's ever going to be okay to shame a victim, it's going to be me. That's yeah. just the belief because of what I've been through. And that's not to say that it's right, but it is a fear. It's the same fear that, that you're expressing. And not that I need to speak out so that I can have some sort of healing, but just the fact that we struggle with that privately is unfortunate because there's still not really a space like, I don't feel like there's a space in feminism for me, you know? Even though I consider myself a feminist, I feel like feminists don't want me to be a part of their group. And now, especially, what did I ever really do that was so provocative or so bad? Nothing. Especially that's why it's mystifying to me. considering all the stuff that's happened since then and what's happening on a regular basis in this country and with celebrities that we have every day, I never really did anything that crazy, but I was really drug through the coals for a lot of it. I'm very permeable and I'm very sensitive. And so filming that scene where they sacrifice me, um, that for me, that was really reflective of, I felt like my relationship with the movie studios at that point, um, because I felt like that's what they were willing to do to literally bleed me dry. They didn't care about my health, my well-being, mentally, emotionally, physically at all. And they were willing to sacrifice me physically as long as they got what they wanted out of it. And it didn't matter how many times I spoke up and said, I'm hurting. This isn't right. I need someone to protect me. This is going on. Someone needs to listen. It didn't matter at all. And so in that moment, they kind of were a representation of what I was dealing with that way. Just don't really work that much. Like journalists will be like, what do you, I mean, it's nice to see you in a movie because you don't really work that much. And it's like, I have given birth, I've gestated and given birth to three children. I starred in a movie that opened worldwide number one twice. I was on a critically acclaimed sitcom. I executive produced and created a show about archeological controversies. How much more productive yeah, does a woman need to be. Fuck you. And I'm in an industry that treats pregnancy like leprosy. So it's not like I can keep working once I'm past five months. I yeah. have to just do nothing. It is what it is. And that's so frustrating for me because it's like when you are, when you're in Oscar realm or when you're in this like huge blockbuster place and you're in a, a pinup or whatever you want to call me, it's like everything you do after that needs to be on the same right, level. Right, because you've had a moment of ubiquity. Or you're failing. Yes. 